So, in today's video, I'm gonna be comparing iOS 26 Dev Beta 1, which is running on this phone, to iOS- Oh, God damn it! stop! Stop the airdrop! Okay, anyways, uh, I'm gonna be comparing iOS 26 Dev Beta 1, which I got running on this SE2 over here, and I'm gonna compare it to iOS 26 Release, which I got running on this 13 Pro over here. Uh, iOS 26 Dev Beta 1 came out back in June, and Release came out back in September, so it's gonna be kind of exciting to see what happened and, like, the gap of the development there. Oh, and don't worry, it's not gonna be like last time where you're gonna be staring at the phone the entire time. I actually have half a mind to use the screen recording feature this time. Speaking of activating screen recording, uh, take a look at control center on these two different phones, it's wildly different. On Dev Beta 1, you kind of got like liquid glass and full force here where it's kind of hard to make out the individual icons because there's barely any blur on this thing. But on the 13 Pro Max, you got a bit more of a blur, which was introduced actually, yeah, in iOS 26 Dev Beta 2. So uh, kind of a quick turnaround to fix that issue. Now, another thing that's pretty apparent or, or transparent that was terrible, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But in Beta 1, the Notification Center had a slight dim around your notifications, but starting with Developer Beta 4, they actually dimmed the entire wallpaper around your notifications for better readability, making the release version slightly less migraine-inducing. Speaking of the Notification Center and the lock screen anyways, iOS 26 Dev Beta 1's default wallpaper actually didn't come with the dynamic setting iOS 26 release has. The dynamic wallpaper actually came out with iOS 26 Dev Beta 4, and it's pretty cool because it just changes the color of the wallpaper based on the time of day, but on Beta 1, if you try to customize it, you just get this frozen screen. It bugs out constantly. When opening and closing apps on iOS 26 Dev Beta 1, it reuses the animations we had back in iOS 18, but on iOS 26 release, you get brand new animations that kind of flow better with the new operating system. You can thank iOS 26 Dev Beta 6 for those animation changes, and I just love how the control center like bounces around now compared to how it did on the older software. Oh, but uh, before we continue, sponsor time. This is a Ugreen NAS, and it works kind of like cloud storage, but it stores all of my data locally, safely, in my own hard drives, and don't even get me started on how insane it is to pay cloud prices compared to just getting this thing. This thing might look small, but it can store up to 20 million pictures, 40k movies, or even 62 million files, and Ugreen itself has a wide compatibility list for a bunch of hard drives. Wow, that's it. All I had to do was plug the thing in, read the user manual, and 10 minutes later, I'm all ready to use the NAS. This Ugreen NAS has a 1 gigabit network port and the speed is up to 125 megabits a second. It can transfer a 1 gig file in just several seconds. Here, uh, let me show you. Oh, it's almost done? <laughs> Sorry, I blinked. Compared to the NAS, drive takes way longer. 3 seconds versus a minute. And by using the app, I can connect quickly via NFC to access my files fast, back up my iPhone album automatically, and guard my data safely by using a RAID 1 configuration to ensure I always have a second copy of a drive fails. Not to mention me being able to wirelessly back up my Mac with Time Machine, and have different permissions for different users on my NAS. Now, if this sounds like something you'd be interested in, click the link in the description to get 20% off this amazing NAS. Ever since developer beta 6, swiping back in settings gives you kind of like a bounce now, but uh, on the release version, beta 1, that's not the case. And I mean, good luck getting any animations to play well on dev beta 1 as well, this beta performs like absolute shit. Liquid Glass itself has had a ton of changes throughout the development of iOS 26. Beta 2 tweaked it just a bit more with the control center changes and small tweaks, but beta 3 just nuked the entire effect into frosted glass, which it kind of defeated the entire point of the redesign, but it, thankfully the effect returned in beta 4 and was improved in the other betas until we have the effect on release 26. Now this is a bit of a smaller change, but it makes me sad nonetheless. Uh, on iOS 26 Dev Beta 1, the camera icon looked pretty much exactly how it did on iOS 6, but on 26 Dev Beta 5, they changed the uh, icon to look more like an actual iPhone camera, which you couldn't let me have this one thing, come on. Did you also know that when 26 Dev Beta 1 launched, it didn't have any of the new ringtones that 26 got? Those new ringtones were actually added in iOS 26 Developer Beta 6, and thank god, because they sound way better than just the standard reflection. iOS 26 Dev Beta 6 was also when they added the liquid glass effect to toggling switches and settings, which that was not present on Beta 1, and I think it's a good change, because that just looks so cool. 
The difference between these two photo apps on the same operating system, one being a beta and one being a release version, it's actually pretty different. The library section on Dev Beta 1, actually, it shows you like the date when you're scrolling through your library, and actually the liquid glass like UI at the bottom, when you're swiping up to go through your library, it actually condenses into like time sensitive settings. On the release version, that's been removed. I, I don't know why, I think that would actually be more useful, but changes change, I guess. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, did I mention this beta 1 has a ton of bugs? Look at that folder in the corner. <laughs> that's not supposed to happen. The app store between these two versions is pretty much the same, but there is a couple of differences. Like on the iOS 26 release version, they removed the text that told you what day it was. Why? Like, where else am I going to know the date? A, a calendar? I don't have a life, okay? I play with phones. Oh, also, uh, on the 26 release version, they added text in the search bar that says games, apps, and more. Maps is pretty different between these two as well. Uh, on Dev Beta 1, to get directions to somewhere, you got to hit this button in the corner, which that's kind of like out of the way and inconvenient. That, that was a bad decision. I'm glad they changed that on the release version. And when getting directions, iOS 26 Dev Beta 1 actually has more of a blur than the release version. I, I thought they were like making it worse the more they updated it. The direction page is actually the exact same as well, more liquid glass than the newer one. I, I really didn't expect that. The home app is basically the same between these two, but this is just the perfect example of how much they tweaked liquid glass. On beta 1, it looks just awful. Like, look at the bottom there. You can barely read it. And look at the top as well. That does not look good. It's like a gray blob. But on the actual release candidate, way better, way better. You can actually read everything. The fitness app actually got a pretty big facelift between these betas as well. On Dev Beta 1, it looks like it's straight out of iOS 18, but on 26 release, it actually starts to look proper. On the release version of iOS 26, they actually did add a workout tab, which uh, I think they added it just because the AirPods Pro 3 can read your heart rate and they just want to loot people in who don't have an Apple Watch into their fitness ecosystem, but... Still a pretty cool change nonetheless. iOS 26 Dev Beta 1 actually retained the favorites button from the Translate app on iOS 18, but all the way up to the release candidate, it's been moved to this top menu. Preview went from being pretty boring on Beta 1 without any background elements behind the main title card, but on the release candidate, you got some nice little pictures to give you an example. The journal app was definitely changed between these two versions. Dev Beta 1 has an all entries section, but the release candidate has a journal section. And if you haven't started journaling yet, it changed it from a way passive-aggressive start journaling to a no entries, so a good change I guess, but who uses the journal app, okay? That's the main issue here. And you're gonna have to take my word for this one because it's kind of impossible to show it now, but back when iOS 26 was in beta, the tips app was completely empty except for showing like, oh hey, it's iOS 26, so... I guess they've done like a server-side thing to enable it on Dev Beta 1, which uh, I guess that's cool. And here's a surprise to no one, the iTunes Store still hasn't been touched since like iOS 11. Great job, Apple. I mean, uh, I guess it's fair who uses the iTunes Store. Speaking of unupdated apps, has Compass been touched since like iOS 7 either? The Measure app actually got some slight UI tweaks over here. You've got a nice, uh, I guess you call it a hamburger menu where it shows you all the measurements you've done so you can easily copy them on iOS 26 release. And uh, they moved the back button actually over here. Uh, I gotta like measure this thing to actually show you. So yeah, they moved the back button from being at the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen. And I noticed that's like kind of like a, a common thing with iOS 26. They're trying to make the OS more reachable, which with these giant phones we have nowadays, that's amazing. Please do more of this, Apple. The Magnify app has a more distinct like contrast around the liquid glass elements, which that's great because the only people who use the Magnify app are people who can't see and liquid glass is gonna, it's gonna be a huge headache for these people, so good call. Oh, and the enter password prompt to do anything on the phone, it looked really, really rough on beta 1. There was no separation between the button and the background, but on 26 release, there's a clear distinction. The passwords app itself is pretty similar aside from the microphone button being not filled in on the release version and the beta version having like an add folder button to share your password, which yeah, that doesn't seem like a very good idea now, does it? The only major difference between these Safari versions is the liquid glass effect on iOS 26 Dev Beta 1. It's actually way more subdued than it is compared to the release version, which I find really funny because when the Dev Beta 1 released, everybody was whining so much about how liquid glass was unreadable. And honestly, I've just been finding so many examples about it looks better to like read stuff on the Dev Beta compared to the release version. So what were you guys complaining about? This is worse. 
iMessage doesn't have too many differences. It came out of the gate looking pretty awesome, but one cool quality of life feature I see is on the release version, you can actually copy the phone number over here in this cool little recent menu. Now this is probably the most minuscule small change we have here, but on iOS 26 Dev Beta 1, when you're moving the, like the liquid glass like slider thingy, uh, it won't actually like leave everything highlighted. It only highlights on what you're currently selecting. But on iOS 26 release, like pretty much anything you go over is red. So it, I don't really understand why they did that, but good change, I guess. For the music app, the only differences I can really see here is how terrible Liquid Glass is on Beta 1. That is unreadable, but what it does say is it says artists, songs, lyrics, and more, and on the release version it just says Apple Music, so they're really trying to get you to sign up for Apple Music. Here's the comparison between how the notifications look on these two different versions, and okay, again, Beta 1 has less of a Liquid Glass effect than the release version. When viewing a photo on iOS 26 release, there's definitely some liquid glass here. Like, that's kind of, like, unreadable at the bottom, those glyphs. That's really bad, actually. Uh, I do prefer the Beta 1 design because you can actually see what the icons are, and don't get me started the Today symbol. They just, they just forgot that, okay? It's just blending in with the picture. So, uh, that's about it for comparing these two different iOS 26 beta versions. I mean, off the bat, they do look pretty similar, but when you get into the details between these two devices, there's... There's a lot of differences that add up, okay? Especially the performance on Beta 1. If you've ever run Beta 1 on your main phone before, you, you felt the pain, okay? It, it was unusable. And if you hate fun and do not like liquid glass, good news, because as I'm filming this, iOS 26.1 Beta 4 has dropped a few hours ago, and there's actually a liquid glass toggle now. You can choose between clear and tinted. So if you hate liquid glass, please, for the love of God, use tinted and shut up, okay? I I, I hate the complaining. It's all I see now. Liquid glass sucks, liquid glass sucks. Just use the phone, okay? Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, let me know what else you want to see from me in the comments below. And remember, I have no bias on liquid glass. I'm perfectly neutral. Uh, see you later.